As promised, we're going to be playing through the bane of my existence as Linda, the pink one. She has a bow. As a child, this level naturally confused me because I assumed that something called Kids Land would be easy, but if we come over here and talk to the White Rabbit... The stage is full of yummy things, but he warns us... It's not gonna be- not gonna be an easy time. Which is right, because this is the most challenging stage in the game. Here's an introduction to a new mechanic. Well, not a new mechanic, but a new use for mechanic. We need to push these wafer walls back. We can push them back varying degrees, as you're seeing, to get the different crowns. And we need to remember that how far they're pushed back is directly dependent on how many things we hit them with. That'll be important later. Here's the first room that leads to the bane of my existence. It's just some moving platforms. Pretty simple. Swing in the direction with the most open space, which in this case is both directions. This room is entirely empty, save for some extra stuff that leads to a crown. Just need to jump and use our tongue on the poles, which is a little difficult to time properly, believe it or not, because your tongue does work on the slight delay. In this room, there are two more crowns, one of which is hidden behind this. And there's another one of those wafer walls that we need to push back. So we're going to want to get as much of these chocolate bullets as we can. When you jump up here, push it back. And then quickly rush up there and jump over the gap as quickly as possible. If the wall pushes us in mid-jump, then we'll fall off and have to start over. Thankfully, it was just one wall, so it wasn't a big deal. This room has nothing special about it. We just need to get to the other side. I'm not sure what the intention was here. And this room is one of the weirder challenges the game offers. We have to find out which of the choice of moving platforms actually leads forward based on trial and error, but you can cheese it very easily by jumping to places you're not supposed to. They expected you to wait until the ride was over before you started jumping. Watch out for this ice cream sandwich. He's a tricky fucker, he'll knock you right off the platform. In this room we have to combat some ice cream whisks? It, that's what it looks like those are, just some whisks. They're capable of jumping anywhere in the room from anywhere else in the room, so you have to follow their shadow to see where they're going to land. Not a challenging room, but it's still fun. Up next we have, uh, well, you should know how to swing by your tongue at this point, right? Because that's all this is. The game is making sure you know how, though, before we get to the bane of my existence room. This isn't it, but it's almost there. For the first time, we have to swing horizontally- oops. For the first time, we have to swing horizontally across moving platforms. And the reason I died there was because I violated the rule, you're always supposed to swing toward the area with more open space. Please remember that the curvature of your tongue greatly decides how far the swing will go. This chocolate bar and that pole move at varying speeds, so we just have to make sure that they're far enough apart that we can swing, well, to the exit. Up here, there are, instead of one, two wafer walls. The solution here is simply to shoot them both separately. And if you're not sure if you shot one of them enough times, don't worry, just try again. There's no real penalty except you fall down and have to start over. After you're satisfied, just rush to the exit like last time. It's a bit, a bit more tight this time, but you should be able to do it. I love how many uses they found for the game's most basic mechanics. That's how you know there's good game design happening. In this room, we just have to get around this glass wall. That was pretty easy. Well, I made it look easy. It may be more difficult than it seems. I'm not sure because I've done it too much. And this room is more swinging training. It may seem a bit unnecessary, but I assure you that we're gonna need this. Oops, slipped right off the edge. I assure you that we're going to need this for THE room. I think everything in this game could reasonably be beaten by a child. In fact, it was beaten by me as a child. Except for THE room, which I believe we're very close to now. 
This area isn't quite it, but it's a sign that we're getting very close. It's more moving platforms, but this time... Oh dear. But this time, the platforms we have to swing on are moving different speeds in addition to, well, just moving in general. We have to time our tongue so that way we pull onto the platform, even though the platform is moving at a different speed than the pole. And then we have to find a way to swing to a platform that's moving at different speed than the platform we're currently on. Which is really hard, in case that doesn't sound hard. It's all about being aware of the space around you. Spatial awareness is the theme of these rooms. If you can't tell where something's going to be, how much space you have when you move, then you're not going to be able to make it. You also have to think about how twisting your tongue affects... Oh dear, affects your swing arc. That's also very important. And where you should be standing on the platform before you swing to get where you want to land. And always make sure to swing in the area with the most open space. So there's a lot of stuff to think about for a simple jump. Or, well, I guess it's not a jump, but you understand what I mean. I just want to make sure I convey the brain power at work for all of those challenges, so that way when I die 20 times in the upcoming room, you're not going to make too much fun of me. Somehow I completely lost track of the last whisk. Had no idea where it went. But that's okay, I find it eventually. It was a bit of an adventure. Little, little tiny adventure. There we go. Up next is the last room before the bane of my existence. It's another one of those rooms where we have to decide which moving platform is the correct one. And just like the last one, we can cheese it. It's pretty straightforward until you take the platform that gets you to the back wall. And then there are some weird patterns that go on with the platforms. But we can get around this very easily. And while I'm doing that, I want to tell you I'm going to be quiet for the next room, which is the hardest room in the game, I believe. I'm going to edit together all of my deaths, so that way you can see how hard it is and, well, in a timely fashion. Alright, it's time for a really easy boss after the hell that was that room. This cake just shoots strawberry bombs at us, which we can avoid by moving horizontally or diagonally. And then we just suck up one of these chocolate bullets from the inside, and after we suck up all four, it dies. That rock music you briefly heard in the last room is actually from somewhere in this game, but I won't spoil where. 